This is the Thunderbolt 2000 Multiple Rocket Launcher. Although accidents often occurred during exercises, it remains the mainstay of the Taiwan Army. Last year, the Mark 66 rocket module was added, with firepower covering from nearby to precision strikes afar. It has become known as the Hamars of Taiwan. In this issue, let's talk about the Thunderbolt 2000, the strongest anti-landing weapon of the Taiwan Army. The Thunderbolt 2000 was developed by the National Chungshan Institute of Science and Technology. It incorporates various mainstream rocket artillery design schemes from around the world. It is a modern multi-barrel rocket artillery system designed to replace the obsolete Kung Fong 6 117mm multi-barrel rocket artillery during the Han Kuang exercise in April 2001. It fired all 27 Mark 30 rockets in 52 seconds, dispensing 7,209 dual-purpose warheads in the sea target area, covering an area equivalent to about six soccer fields. It is one of the most powerful multi-barrel rocket systems in the world. The rocket launcher of the Thunderbolt 2000 adopts a modular design similar to the M270 of U.S. Army with the frame of the launcher and the rocket storage box being separate and independent. On the battlefield, the Thunderbolt 2000 only needs to use the crane on the chassis to unload the fired rocket launcher box and then hoist the new launcher box sealed at the factory onto the frame to complete the reloading process. The entire operation takes only 7 minutes, greatly improving the reloading efficiency, but in contrast, the Kung Fong 6 build launch tube and rotating base in one unit, the rockets must be loaded manually one by one, which is extremely time-consuming without a single reloading. Operation takes about 17 minutes, which is fatal on the battlefield. The longer the loading time, the greater the danger exposed to enemy fire. The increase in automation of the Thunderbolt 2000 brings more benefits than just this. Not only has the number of operators been reduced from 6 to 3 compared to the Kung Fong 6, but also with more choice of weapons and ammunition. As long as the launcher box can be combined and integrated with the vehicle-mounted fire control system, the Thunderbolt 2000 can choose a lot of weapons with diversity. The rocket series developed by the National Chungshan Institute for the Thunderbolt 2000 has been expanded from the original three types to four, namely Mark 15, Mark 30, Mark 45, and the newly tested Mark 66. They have different ranges and powers, and they can meet more mission requirements combined. We will briefly introduce the firepower of each. First, the Mark 15 rocket is an improvement of the Kung Fong 6 rocket. It has the same diameter of 117 millimeters with Kung Fong 6, weighs up to 42 kilograms, and is about 1.96 meters long. It uses a timed or airburst fuse instead of the impact fuse of the Kung Fong 6 rocket and a newly developed steel ball high explosive warhead. Each rocket can carry 6,400 steel balls with a diameter of 6.4 millimeters, mainly used to kill soft targets. One Mark 15 rocket module consists of 20 launchers, and the Thunderbolt 2000 launcher frame can accommodate up to three modules, totaling 60 rockets. The range is between 7 to 15 kilometers, with a larger kill coverage area than the Kung Fong 6. The Mark 30 increases the killing diameter to 182 millimeters and the full length of the projectile to 3.9 meters, weighing 186 kilograms. The maximum range is increased to 30 kilometers and can be equipped with steel ball high explosive warheads or dual use warheads. The steel ball high explosive warhead of the Mark 30 uses the same airburst or timed fuse as the Mark 15, but enhances the payload capacity to carry 18,300 steel balls with a diameter of 8 mm, capable of penetrating 4.75 mm of steel plate. As for the APAM warhead, its performance is similar to that of the USM-26 rocket but contains 267M-77 dual-purpose munitions and uses a spiral trajectory during the terminal phase to disperse a large number of steel fragments, capable of penetrating 8 to 10 centimeter steel armor, causing severe tangible damage and psychological shock to the enemy. Mark 30 rocket module consists of nine launchers, and the Thunderbolt 2000 can accommodate three modules, totaling 27 rockets. 
Then here is the Mark 45, with a diameter increased to 227 mm, a length of about 4 meters, and a weight of 305 kilograms. The maximum range is extended from 25 to 45 kilometers, and also equipped with larger steel ball high-explosive warheads and dual-use warheads. For example, the quantity of 8mm steel balls in the Mark 45 steel ball high-explosive warhead is increased to 25,000, with a wider kill range. The weight of the dual-use warhead is said to also increase to 175 kilograms and can carry 518 M77 dual-purpose munitions. Mark 45 rocket module consists of six launchers and the Thunderbolt 2000 can install up to two modules at a time, totaling 12 rockets. In addition, the National Chungshan Institute has also added the Mark 66 rocket module for the Thunderbolt 2000 and completed the initial operational evaluation of the Mark 66 extended range rocket. In 2023, this makes the Thunderbolt 2000 completely a Taiwan version of high mobility artillery rocket system. The Mark 66 is a newly developed extended range rocket by Taiwan with an originally planned range of 70 to 100 kilometers. Later, it changed to an ammunition combination of precision rocket with a range of 50 to 70 kilometers and tactical missile with a range of 150 kilometers. Currently, both types of ammunition have completed the initial operational evaluation. However, due to the heavy weight of the Mark 66 extended range rocket and tactical missile containers, they cannot be used on the Thunderbolt 2000's existing launcher vehicles. Therefore, there are plans to purchase 8x8 rocket missile launch vehicles that meet the composite requirements. The tactical missiles will also be carried by the new launch vehicles, with plans to carry two tactical missiles. The combination of rockets and tactical missiles promoted its high mobility will effectively increase the flexibility of the Taiwanese army to adapt its weapon systems according to mission requirements. As for the new launch vehicle, the National Chungshan Institute had already inquired with major European and American car manufacturers about their willingness to participate in the 8x8 missile launch vehicle procurement project and conducted bidding according to regulations. It is reported that the Czech Republic has expressed a high willingness to participate in Taiwan with the 8x8 vehicles produced by its military industry company Tatra due to their excellent quality and low price. It is highly possible to be the chassis of Thunderbolt 2000 in the future. The Taiwan Army's high regard for the Thunderbolt 2000 has not been affected by factors such as the uncertainty of the launch vehicle due to the Mark 66 module. They still have high hopes for its powerful firepower to carry out anti-landing operations. The Thunderbolt 2000 can almost cover enemy landing forces completely from the anchorage to most areas near the beach in anti-landing operations. For example, the Mark 45 rocket with the longest range can cover the waters where enemy ships transfer, especially suitable for attacking face-shaped targets formed by large ships surrounded by small boats. According to data from the National Chungshan Institute, all 12 rockets can be fired within 48 seconds using Mark 45. The Mark 30 rocket with a diameter and range in the middle is suitable for attacking landing craft assembly areas and amphibious assault vehicle swimming landing areas. All 27 ammunition can be fired within 54 seconds. Finally, the Mark 15 rocket with the shortest range only needs to target the water and beachhead areas a few kilometers from the shore and can fire all 60 rockets within 30 seconds. This creates a dense firepower network from the shore to the beachhead, coupled with a precise vehicle-mounted fire control system and built-in self-test system, allowing it to quickly maximize enemy casualties and quickly identify and eliminate system faults to improve battlefield survivability. Furthermore, to coordinate with the operation of the Thunderbolt 2000, the National Chungshan Institute has also introduced supporting operation, training, and maintenance simulators to facilitate personnel training and provide grassroots units with a certain degree of autonomous logistical support capability. The Thunderbolt 2000 surpasses the Comfoam 6 in terms of firepower, range, accuracy, and automation. Its ability for rapid response and quick reloading are beyond the reach of the Comfoam 6. Although the United States also promoted the M270 multiple rocket system to Taiwan during the same period, the price of the Thunderbolt 2000 is only one-third of the M270s with no compromise in performance. Ultimately, Taiwan decided to abandon purchasing of the M270. 
The only gap between Thunderbolt 2000 and M270 is perhaps the lack of combat experience of the Thunderbolt 2000. But who would have thought that the Thunderbolt 2000, so relied upon by the Taiwan Army, would also have a 10-year stagnation period and fail to be mass-produced? The Thunderbolt 2000's difficulty in mass production is not due to technical shortcomings of the launch system but the inability to resolve the issue of the carrying chassis for the rockets. It is reported that the Thunderbolt Special Project team was unanimously optimistic about the M977 8x88 wheel heavy truck from the U.S. Oshkosh Corporation. The truck was originally the launch vehicle for the Patriot air defense missile and performed excellently in actual combat. Therefore, the prototype vehicle for the Thunderbolt 2000 used this chassis and passed comprehensive performance tests, being on the verge of production and service. However, things took an unexpected turn. Oshkosh Corporation demanded exorbitant prices, nearly 2.5 times the budget of the National Chungshan Institute, which led to subsequent mass production models being forced to abandon this chassis. It is said that the heavy truck procurement for the Thunderbolt 2000 chassis went through a total of 17 failed bids, resulting in most of the 2000s with only a lonely prototype vehicle for the Thunderbolt 2000. This severely affected the transformation process of the Thunderbolt 2000. After many years of precipitation in September 2009, Taiwan suddenly announced that the newly redesigned Thunderbolt 2000 was about to undergo testing with plans to complete operational evaluations by the end of that year. The news caused a shock. How did it suddenly go into testing? After an investigation, it was found that in 2007, the procurement of Thunderbolt 2000 launch vehicle had undergone a second public bidding process. In the end, South Korea's Kanlim Corporation won the bid officially with plans to purchase 54 HX81 8x8 heavy trucks as Thunderbolt 2000 carriers, with an average price of 18 million new Taiwan dollars per vehicle. This contract was divided into two phases, with the first phase assembling three sample vehicles in 2009 for initial operational evaluations with the production version of the Thunderbolt 2000 if the evaluations passed. The formal production of 54 mass-produced trucks would commence. At the same time, in July 2009, the National Chungshan Institute held a bid for Thunderbolt 2000 rocket transportation and supply vehicles. Once again, a Korean manufacturer Kia won the bid at a low price. The total price was 190 million new Taiwan dollars, averaging 3.8 million new Taiwan dollars per vehicle. This inevitably raised questions from the public. Taiwan's self-developed flagship weapon chose a Korean truck chassis with such a strange combination, which seemed suspicious. Soon, news broke that Korean companies were not entirely self-designing eight-wheel drive and independent suspension chassis. Even major Korean companies like Daewoo and Hyundai did not have them. Upon investigation, the Korean Kanlim Corporation, which won the bid, was originally just a company that modified cranes, with its main business being the production of civilian telescopic cranes. It had never produced truck chassis, let alone a complex eight-wheel drive independent suspension heavy-duty chassis. What it provided to Taiwan through the bidding process was actually an 8x4 commercial truck purchased from Mann in Germany, which was later modified to become an 8x8 all-wheel drive knockoff. The technical risks involved can be imagined. Another company, Kia Motors, was also singled out for criticism in the Asia-Pacific Defense magazine. According to the report of October 2009, the appearance of the trucks proposed by Kia resembled the FAP 3232 BDST AV 8x8 wheel truck made in Yugoslavia, indicating that it was likely a self-modified product with questionable quality. Kia could not control the production capacity and supply of all components and could not guarantee logistical support during service. Moreover, judging from the contract's two-year warranty, it was likely that they would not be responsible for logistics after the contract expired. In summary, the Thunderbolt 2000's carrier chassis raised suspicions regarding both its quality and logistical maintenance. Under public pressure, the Chungshan Institute and relevant authorities in Taiwan had to make concessions. They initially rejected the three prototype vehicles provided by the South Korean Kanlim Corporation. South Korea, 
unwilling to incur losses, immediately launched a public relations counterattack and demanded Taiwan to pay hefty breach of contract penalties. After several rounds of negotiations, the Taiwan Army Command ultimately decided to continue using the chassis provided by Kanlim Corporation for the rocket artillery. The deal with Kia, which hadn't been formally signed, was naturally abandoned. Instead, through intermediaries via special channels, Taiwan arranged for the acquisition of 57 Iveco 8x8 trucks from Italy to be used as rocket artillery supply vehicles and logistical support vehicles. Although the Thunderbolt 2000 still couldn't avoid the drawbacks of simultaneously using two types of chassis, resulting in complex logistical challenges, it finally entered mass production as desired. The system architecture of the mass-produced Thunderbolt 2000 is basically the same as the prototype vehicle. However, due to the prolonged 10-year delay in mass production operations, several electronic components on the vehicle had become outdated before entering service. Therefore, before the mass-produced Thunderbolt 2000 entered service, it underwent several upgrades, such as updating the CPU of the fire control system and replacing the navigation system provided by French Sagem Company, and so on. August 2012, the Thunderbolt 2000 multiple rocket launchers began to be delivered to the Taiwanese Army and were received by an experimental battalion established by the Artillery Command of the 6th Army Command of the Taiwanese Army kicking off a year-long acceptance and evaluation process. The first Thunderbolt 2000 Multiple Rocket Launcher Battalion was expected to be established within 2013. According to the original plan, the Thunderbolt 2000 was to be deployed on outlying islands such as Kinmen and Matsu to defend Taiwan. After adjustments in troop deployments, three battalions totaling 43 sets of Thunderbolt 2000 are now deployed on Taiwan Island and Penghu for defense operations.